G'day, I'm Warwick Schiller and today I want to talk to you about a couple of ideas that I discussed in the last video I put up here and it's about sometimes when you're working with a horse you need to get to the feet to get to the mind which means you need to move their feet somewhere to get them to change what they're thinking and sometimes you need them to sometimes you need to get the mind to change what it's thinking in order to get the feet to go a certain place and the, I, in the last video I did I talked about how sometimes you want to get to the mind to get to the feet and that that video was about a a uh, mule that had separation anxiety at a clinic and he was stuck down in one corner and all they did was was if you watch the videos it's i get him to flick his ear his thoughts go from outside the arena back into the arena and eventually he went from being have uh, pretty good separation anxiety and just wandering back and forth along a fence in the corner to just walking down the arena with his ears flopping and with the rain swinging and that one was about getting the mind to get to the feet and some and, and and i personally these days would rather try to do that everything i'm doing these days i'm trying to get really get them to change their mind um first but sometimes because of past experiences with that that horse's past experiences they can't do that and i want to tell you a little bit about <laughs> one i had with this one here so this is my wife's old reigning horse oscar he's 17 years old he's the horse that uh, my wife showed at the world of question games in 2018 at the time he was the oldest reigning horse there he was uh, 14 years old at the time and they uh, almost made the individual final so he was oh oscar was pretty darn good there but one of the things oscar would do when we first got him as far as doing the reining stuff is if you you know ran up and down the arena like running to stops and he got a bit wound up he would get all bowed up and you could you know you could use your seat to slow down and pick your hand up to slow down but he would get behind the bridle and you could get his, his you know his basically his mouth would come back to you and his body would kind of keep going and we've worked on that um over the last couple of years and it's so much better now and we really basically did a lot of classical dressage stuff with him to where he had to carry his body much better uh, we did a lot of shoulder in shoulder in was probably the 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 thing we did the most which is not an exercise most uh reiners do but i think it's one of the most important exercises to especially unlock these these shoulders but that was a that was a um you know that was an issue that we had with him and from that he's pretty good at that now um, but we have taken him trail riding a couple of times and when he's when, he, when you're out trail riding when he gets going he gets a bit like that and recently we uh, spent some time in Arizona we went down there for a show and then we spent a week in between that show and the next show and we actually were trail riding in the desert we had the dogs we camped out it was we were actually uh, camping right by the Tonto National Forest which is 2.9 million acres of absolutely beautiful Sonoran Desert is what it's called and uh, there's all these washes these you know these dry riverbed sort of things creek beds that you can you can you can canter up there and uh, it was just an amazing week in the desert you know we take the sometimes we'd go hiking and uh, just take the dogs sometimes we'd go hiking and take the dogs and lead one of the horses um, sometimes I would ride a horse and lead a horse and sometimes we'd just go out riding on her own and Robin this is Robin's horse so she rides him mostly but what we found like trotting along you know what I like to do is just get in a big old long trot and trot along those those dry washes there and Robin would be riding him and he would be he'd go trot 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 tr and then he'd get wound up and he'd go off into a canter and Robin could pick up and slow him down and he's very obedient very well trained and he would slow down you could slow down back to a trot you can slow to a walk you could slow to a stop with no resistance from him okay it wasn't like he was fighting or anything you could do it really subtly but as soon as you let go then he'd go again and he'd trot faster and trot faster and, faster and he'd break off into the canter and the thing he i noticed so robin said do you want to hop on and, and try this and the thing i noticed was he would have his ears pricked like that and you could pick up even subtly pick up and go from a canter to a trot to a walk and he wasn't arguing but those ears would not ever flick backwards and so his thoughts never left up there and you can get him to physically come back but his thoughts stayed up there so what i started doing was i would i was in front had robin behind me i'd put my hand down and he'd go trot 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 canter 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 and i'd pick up and he'd go from a canter to a trot to a walk to a stop 
and his ears were still forward. And what I would do, it wasn't until he came to a stop, and he's not gonna do it here, but he'd come to a stop, he'd still be thinking up there, and so I would turn the other way. And as I would turn the other way, he'd go, oh, what are you doing back there? And then I would, when his ear flicked back, I'd turn and off, and his, he was present. His mind was back in his body. His mind was back here with me. And then we'd go off again, and he'd cha 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 or roll off into a canter, and I'd pick up and do it again. And the more I did it, after a while he'd be trotting and he'd pick up the canter and I'd pick up and he'd go from a canter to a trot to a walk to a, oh, ear flick and then I could put my hand down and then he was good for a while. And eventually I got to where he would not canter on his own. I could just have the range loose like this and trot and he would just trot, 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 trot. And his trot didn't speed up. And the thing is, it's because he was mentally really staying back here. But with, so this is about getting his feet to get to the mind. And I, you know, I could get his body to do a lot of stuff and I still couldn't get his mind, but I had to take those feet and actually start to go off in the opposite direction before he flicked his ear back to me. And it's, it's maybe like a subtler version of something I used to do, but something I've done a lot in the past uh, with horses that, that uh, like say have separation anxiety, kind of like the mule at the clinic. A lot of times a horse, let's say, they're attracted to one end of the arena, they're attracted to the gate and what I will do with them is just turn loose of them and let them go to the gate. Their mind is outside the gate. They walk over to the gate and I'll just start walking some circles on them right there, okay? And after walking circles there for a while, their mind kind of starts to go, well, this is not much fun. Where else can I go? And you'll, you'll kind of get the idea that they're subtly thinking down the arena instead of out of the arena. And right then I'll let go and they'll just walk away from the arena. And that's, that's a version of moving the feet to get to the mind to help with like separation anxiety or, or destination addiction, I call it barn sourness, all that sort of stuff. And that's what I used to do a lot. But with the mule, I did the complete opposite. But when we're out there on the trail, um, like I said, I could slow Oscar all the way down and I still didn't have him change his mind until I actually turned his feet the other way. And that's what I'm trying to get you to think about here is I was trying to get to the mind. I wasn't trying to get to the feet. I wasn't trying to get him to slow down. I was trying to get him to be present here because the reason he would go trot, 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 canna, 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 is because his mind was up there and I kind of want his mind to be, where are we going? What are we doing? Where are we going? What are we doing? And it's funny, with him in the arena, I've been trying to do the opposite because when we first got him, you start doing the reining maneuvers and he goes around and his ears are like right they are right now. They're focused back here all the time. And so in the arena, I'd like him to be a bit more up there. Kendall, can you just walk over there and jump up and down a little bit? I, in the arena, I would like his ears to be a little bit more like <laughs> that. Thank you, Kendall. I'd like them to be more like that. But they tend to be like that. But out on the trail, they're way up there. And I want to be more a little bit coming back here. And that, you know, that if you've followed the principles of training um, episodes, one of, the, one of the principles is do the opposite. And so when their ears are just stuck back here, I'd like them to be up there. But when their ears are stuck there, I'd like them back here. So... I had a number of people comment on that last video I did with the mule and say, well, how would you work on um, moving the feet to get to the mind? And the little example I gave you over by the gate right there, if you've watched some of the principles of training episodes, I had one uh, or two episodes that were on a chronically rearing a venting mare. I did it with her in those episodes. If you watch that, you can see them. And there was also um, a series with a... Um, uh, imported warm blood stay and that a Grand Prix dressage rider came down the issue was having some problems with and if you watch that series he went from you know with with that series when we t she has some crookedness issues like loping going in a circle he was bulging out leaning in and for me what I noticed was if she was doing a circle the bulging out was on that gate side of the circle and the leaning in was on the opposite end of the circle which means he wasn't budging out or leaning in he was thinking about the gate and with him we let him go over to the gate and then we did some work over there. And over a period of two days, we went from, like the first time she turned him loose at a trot, like loose rein, he kind of had a bit of a bucking sort of a fit. But we went from, in two days, we went from him doing that to being able to walk, trot and canter around the arena bridleless. And we didn't teach him anything bridleless. All we did was get rid of his desire to be over there. And if there's no desire to be over there, everywhere else is good. But you know, if you watch those two, if you're interested in more about how to get to the, feet in order to get to the mind those two uh series right there will give you a, 
a bit better idea about that. So I hope that gives you some, just a, a few different ideas about how you can get to the feet to get to the mind. And the video of the mule is more about how to get the mind to uh, get to the feet. So I hope that helps. See you guys next time.